Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and this episode is about transitioning from 2.79 to 2.8. Yes, we've got the release candidate today and a fully stable release will be with us in just a couple of days. So if you go onto the Blender site, you can download 2.8 and this video is going to show you the major differences and where most of the usual things are. It's important to say that this is not a beginner's tutorial. It is just a transitioning tutorial, so I'm assuming you have some knowledge of Blender. My shortcut keys are in the bottom left, which may help you. The first thing to note is left click. I think this is a fantastic thing and it will bring us in line with other programs. So users transitioning from Maya to something like Blender won't get frustrated and leave straight away. You can also box select, which is quite nice. So you can select multiple objects by box selecting. And that's just with a left click and drag. If I select the box, right click now is object context menu. So there's things like shade smooth, shade flat, set origin is in there. You can copy and paste objects with Control C and Control V. You can also do it with Shift D for duplicating and duplicating linked as well with Alt D. So those are the same, but yes, we can Control C and Control V. So I can grab that and move that there. What's also worth noting with the Control C and Control V, I can take a number like this, copy it and paste it with Control V. If you want to move your 3D cursor, you Shift right click. This is quite intelligent, so it will move onto the object directly in front of it, which I really like. Now we do have some gizmos down the side here. You've got move, rotate, and scale. I imagine most of you are going to be using the shortcut keys. There is a handy measure tool in here as well, so you can click and drag and measure. Grease pencil has had a massive update, but we do have annotation here. Click and hold to get the annotate, and click and hold to get the eraser brush and then click back on your select box and you can go back to normal. What might be handy for some is the gizmo up here because lots of people, uh, let's say if you're using a Cintiq or something, you might not have a numpad available and you can get to the different views with this option here and you can click and drag and move around like this. Perspective view and orthographic, camera view, you can click and drag this and strafe around and you can zoom in. I'm not sure why you'd want to use those two. Just use the wheel on your mouse, but maybe you haven't got one. This sort of menu bar is now at the top. We can still press N to get our properties down the side here. And you then have your tabs across here for things like add-ons. Add-ons will most likely exist down here. That's probably worth saying quickly now, edit preferences, not file preferences. And you get your add-ons in there, of course. Just above that, there's a lock object modes tick. That can be really important for things like Weight painting, if you want to select your bones and then your object and weight paint. And in sculpt mode, if you want to move from one object to the other without having to come out of sculpt mode and into object mode, that's going to be an important option for you. We also have workspaces up the top here. So if I go to something like shading, it brings up the file menu, the UV image editor, the node editor, and then we have our workspace in front of us. I quite like this. They've actually got some useful workspaces like texture painting, animation, rendering, and there's lots more down here. I'll quickly take you to layout again. You have what's called a active tool and workspace settings. There's not really much here at the moment. That's my active tool. And that's what we can see. So I can change the way this tool works. And this is new. The rest you should be used to, and they're just down the side here. But this one will change dependent on the tool that you've got active. So if I go to texture paint, for example, I've now got a draw option here and I can add textures in here. Texture paint is for a different tutorial and there's lots changed there, but it is much simpler now. So for any tool that you click, you do have this active tool workspace settings here. So let's go back to layout. Another thing we've got up here is collections. Collections are fantastic compared to the layer system in 2.79. I will shift A to add and add a mesh cylinder just for something different. And obviously that's going to my 3D cursor over there. And if I press M, which was to move layers in the past, we can now add it to a new collection. And I'm going to call this collection two. And there we have my collections. Now in here, I can then select objects. So I can select all of a collection. I can hide a selection with my hide button there. So that's all the previous ones. And there's lots of other cool things you can do. Now, one thing they have done is they've taken away the render toggles and the viewport toggles, and you can just bring those back with that filter up here. So I'm going to bring those back. 
I actually prefer to see them, but I can understand it does confuse some people. However, I think it's going to be more confusing when they go to turn it off here and they don't know it's still rendering. So they're to be found in the filter just there. You've obviously got other filters as well, as per normal. So let's take a look at the shading tab and obviously there's new things here because we've got different types of viewport display. So up the top here we've got wireframe, solid mode, which you'll be used to, and then there's look dev, and then there's rendered. So look dev, it gives you an HDRI in the background, but it doesn't really take into account your lighting. So if I move this around, it doesn't affect it. So it's a quick preview and then rendered mode. And this actually takes into account the lights. And obviously I'm using EV here. So that's a real time result. If I duplicate the light, you can see it's updating instantly. You can change the renderer in the actual render tab here. So the render tab and EV workbench and cycles workbench. I think is the same as look dev. I've not actually used it at all, but uh, there's cycles and there's EV. Now in cycles, it's all pretty much the same. You've got color management and filmic is the default now. I think it's very slightly different in film and you've got the transparent option there for the background. Sampling does look a bit more different, but you should be able to find your way around this fairly easily. EV is obviously going to be different and I have separate tutorials on this. One thing that's very different is the lighting. Obviously, because they're real-time lights, you can't change the lights in the node editor. You have to change them in the lighting panel down here when you click on a light. And you can't obviously light with objects like you can in cycles. Let's go back to layout. You've got the same options for rendering in layout mode as well. You've got a few other options up here as well. You've got the special transparent mode, which is really nice. You've got overlays here. You can click the button and get rid of all those overlays or you can go in and filter out which ones you'd like or not. You can also show your gizmo tools here and you've got options there as well if you wanted to put your gizmos on. And you can filter out the types of object that you want to see. Now spacebar used to be search but now it starts playback. Instead, if you press F3, you can get the search menu there. If I select this cube and go into edit mode, there's some very slight differences. You've got lots of tools down the side here and you can pull out this menu to get their names. That might be an idea to start off with if you want to use these buttons, but the shortcuts for most of them are still the same. So Control R for loop cuts. To change from vertex, edge, and face mode, you've got these buttons up the top here, or it's one, two, and three. And weirdly, I find that a lot easier now that I'm getting used to it. E to extrude as normal. Now, one thing that did take me a long time to figure out is merging vertices. So if I could press one to go to vertex mode and so if I press double G to slide this and then I select all with A, to deselect all is double A or Alt A. So A to select all or Alt A to remove it, or you can double tap A to deselect all. So let's select all and remove doubles. The remove doubles is now Alt M. It's in the same merge vertices option. So by distance there, and we can go down to our dialog box here and increase the distance if we need to. Down the bottom here, we've got one vertice removed. So I'll just quickly undo that. The last quick point that I think is worth making, I'm sure there's lots that I've missed, but I can always do a part two, is up the top here, we've got snapping. And now there's no option to merge vertices when snapping. However, there is an option down here because I'm in edit mode and vertex mode, I can go to the active tool workspace settings and under options, I have an auto merge there. Now, when I do a double G, to slide, it has merged that vertices. So always look for things under the active tool and workspace settings. So hopefully that's a good starting point. I bet I've missed something really important, but you can comment below and I will get back to you and it will give me ideas for maybe doing a part two. So watch out for part two. Links will be in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope this helps.